Hey vegan freaks, this is Bob. Uh, just finishing up the show, I realized that I forgot to announce something very important and I want to get it in right here at the front of the show because uh, I'm kicking myself for not getting it in the regular show. Uh, so I'll get to this announcement and then we'll get right into show 37. Uh, what I have for you is an announcement about a protest. On Saturday, May 27th, the town of Markham, located in the greater Toronto area, will be hosting the first annual Great Markham Rodeo. Wild at Heart is organizing a protest that will take place on the day of the rodeo. Details are still in the works. We'll be renting school buses to shuttle people from Toronto to Markham and back on May 27th. What we need from you is an RSVP if you would like to ride on the bus. We have to let the bus company know how many people will be coming ASAP. Send an email to info at wildatheart-online.com with a simple yes, your name, and how many people you would like to bring along. You can find out more information at www.wildatheart-online.com. And I hope you will go and protest the rodeo because rodeos suck and they're cruel. Hey, vegan freaks. It is the 21st of May and it's Vegan Freak Radio number 37. Freaks. Hey, how's Jenna? it going? This is Bob. What's and going on out there? We're finally back. Sorry yeah. for our long hiatus there. Well, we're busy people. We are, and we're finally... Graduation was today. That's right. So our obligations are done for the semester. And, and the summer's going to be clear and beautiful. Yes. We still have work to do, but we won't have as many appointment type things. No, we'll be writing. So, uh... So it'll yeah, be good. So we'll have a lot more time. Wow. So, I don't Yay. know. I, I'm upset. Why? Because I lost my stapler. <laughs> <laughs> I did, I lost you, I know, you, you had to come and use mine I know And it's well, a swing line too When we were getting ready for the show I got all tight because My my office is currently the biggest shithole you would ever imagine It really is It's bad, it's really bad There are piles of papers and uh, student papers on the floor And electronic equipment on the floor And it's just a fucking shithole And um, my stapler, I have this green swing line stapler It's like made out of some kind of industrial grade depleted uranium type steel or something <laughs> it is the kick-ass most best ever stapler ever and i love my stapler <laughs> i do though and i was all upset earlier because i couldn't find it i'm sure it's in the pile on your desk somewhere so uh yeah anyway i did use your stapler yes, but you it's but inferior mine's, pl- I, mine's a plastic your stapler one, so is inferior, inferior. Yes. it is inferior uh but you know you let me use it so i can't complain too much <laughs> well enough about staplers we got a lot going on this week yes we do as usual as always. Yes. It was really funny, though. Um, I, I talked to my dad last week on the phone, and uh, my mom hands the phone to my dad, and my dad gets on the phone, and he goes, not vegan. <laughs> <laughs> it's really funny. Here, coming from my dad, who is very much, very, very, very much not vegan. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> he, that man will eat anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he will. Yeah, I've seen But you know what? My dad actually isn't nearly as bad as my Uncle Pep. My Uncle Pepe. This is true. He's a garbage disposal. Oh my god! And <laughs> and on top of it all, he's he's got like these medical conditions, but he's more than happy to show you or illustrate for you whatever the condition is. So if you like, hey, Uncle Pep, show me your hernia. He'll like pull up a shirt, show you the lump, and he'll like move it around. Remember that? Yes. Yeah, and he knows about the different drugs because mm-hmm. he likes he go he actually enjoys going to the hospital getting the different drugs, you know, <laughs> for pre surgery and things like <laughs> this. So, uh, but that man will eat anything. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. really, it's amazing. In major quantities. In serious quantity. Serious quantity. But anyway, oh, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. we got a couple things going on in the show this week. Um, what are we doing? We have a couple shout outs and thank yous we want to get to. We've got some of our own announcements we need to talk about. Mm-hmm. Some exciting vegan yeah. freak things going on. What else? Um, we're going to talk about some funny things with our dogs. Um, then we got a couple news items that we're going to talk about. And then we're going to analyze some commercials. Oh, yeah. Um, which are been in... Uh, on the tube lately, which have been pretty disgusting. Yep. And, you know, we got our usual musical, br- musical breaks. What else do we have? Uh, you know, on the show this week, we're going to play a group called, Mun- uh, called Mundo Matadero. Mm-hmm. And I had, they're from Spain. And then I, you know, Evo from Heartborn, uh, our friend in Portugal, sent me some Portuguese hardcore that I wanted to play. But I didn't think about it until today. We could have had an Iberian Peninsula music show. This is true. But anyway, we'll have to do without them. Our next one, our other one is from... Yeah, it'll have to be next week. Yeah. Our other one's by, by, by Vice Squad. We also want to talk about some news items this week. Yeah, I said that. 
Oh, you did? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Um, and then oh. we're going to talk more about the, the, the one voicemail we had the last time we did the show about the girl who didn't like veggies yep. as a vegan. And we have a Dino segment to follow. Dino, yes. Um, some voicemails. And that'll about do it. That'll do it for the show. Yeah. So that's what we're going to do this week with you. Um, that's what we're doing. Yeah. So uh, have you missed us? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, we're back. In full effect, as yes. they used to say in the old rap songs. Yeah, and in the past week or two, it's been like vegan Christmas around it's t- been uh, cool. Tofu, uh, tofu uh, Hound Press headquarters. headquarters here. Vegan Freak Headquarters. Yes. So, because people have been sending us stuff, and it's been great. We yeah, thank you, cool. everyone. And so we need to do some thank yous to start off the show. Absolutely. The first one f- um, to Emily, who's on our forums as Emmers. And she just started up a bakery called Vegan Confections yeah. in Ohio. And she has a website, uh, www.veganconfections.com. So go visit that, and she'll update it. And I think she's going to have a booth somewhere. Um, I forget what city, Dayton maybe. Uh because, you know, my brain, I don't know. So I forget yeah. exactly what city. So well, you go to her website if you're anywhere in Ohio and check it out. And maybe you can get some, some good vegan baked goods. Excellent. Uh, she sent us some baked goods and they were amazing. Yeah, it was really good. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. They were really good. Very, very good. <laughs> Holy hell. And the dogs just went berserk, too. They, they, like We brought the box <laughs> in the house and they were going crazy. Yeah. <laughs> something about the, the smell. smell. <laughs> yeah. And our, I got to say, I mean, that's not to say that that it's dog food because our dogs have an incredible sense of, of they're carb dogs. They mm-hmm. love good carbohydrates. So, <laughs> like bread. Yeah. If we if they hear us taking the saran wrap, like moving saran wrap at all because we saran wrap our bread, you know, like after it comes out of the bread maker, they go bonkers because they love they love bread and things baked goods. Mm-hmm. So they are definitely not Atkins dogs. No, not at all. They're spoiled too. Yeah. <laughs> they really are. Spoiled rotten. They are. And you spoil them a lot. I do. I you, baby them. You really do baby them. I know. I always have to convince <laughs> you to cut the apron strings with the dogs. <laughs> Especially Mole. I know. Because he's such a big baby. <laughs> I know. But I always have to, con- I always have to convince you to, to cut him loose. You I know? know. Not to cut him loose, but you you always have to be kind of talked into giving them more freedom. I know. I, I know. I understand. Uh, all right. So we want to thank them. We also want to thank Compassion Over Killing. Yes. Uh, they sent us some cool stuff. Yeah, they sent us some t-shirts and stuff. They did. Uh, and it was like kind of a thank you for us mentioning them in our book. Yeah. And yeah. they have an excellent, excellent website and they do a lot of good activism. Yeah, they do. A lot of trying to inform people about what goes on in factory farms. So go to the website. If you haven't, we've mentioned it um, the past couple of weeks when it was uh, Respect Chicken Day, International Respect for Chickens Day. That's we right. mentioned them because they do a lot of uh, campaigns against eggs. So go... COK.net. Absolutely. Good. They're a good organization mm-hmm. and um, tons of infor- ton- tons of great information there. Uh, so thank you for that. We also want to thank Rat and Cat. They sent us uh, a cool nutritional yeast spread that... Uh, it's like, like Marmite, but different. It's better, though. Yeah. It's much better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like more... It's not as concentrated, it seems like, as, mm-hmm. as Marmite. Mm-hmm. So it's it's excellent. I like to put it on Rivita and eat mm-hmm. it that way. Mm-hmm. Kicks yeah. ass. Fucking righteous. Definitely. So, also, we got a really nice package from Charlotte from Calgary. Yeah, all the way from Canada. <laughs> <laughs> well, the other one came all the way from the UK. I know. The other one came all the way from Ohio. Yeah, so. and yeah, we've been getting stuff from all over the place. So, Absolutely. And yeah. Charlotte was really kind to have sent us some stuff and uh, a donation for the show, and we really appreciate that. We've got some CDs from her, and we're going to use those. Yes, on we the show. are on the show. Um, We also need to thank the people at Alternative Outfitters who Mm. gave us a shout out in um, Women's Health Magazine. (laughs) She mentioned her one of her favorite reads was Vegan Freak. And she she sent us a a PDF and copy of the article. It was great to see Uh, it mentioned in sort of this mainstream magazine. Um, And if you don't know, Alternative Outfitters is um, an online only store. They don't have a storefront, but they're based out of California. And they have a lot of purses, shoes, men's shoes and women's shoes, bags, uh, you name it, and the prices are really reasonable. Nice. So, and they've got a lot of cute and, and you know, fashionable kind of things. So, so many good vegan retailers out there. I mean, yes. There's, uh, so many of them. Yeah. And they all need your support. They do. So oh. we will put all the links, of course. Of course. Um, I on also. Our show notes. They also need to thank uh, Mark Patrick, who donated some cash to us and recently wrote a sign, bought a signed copy of our book. But uh, he was really instrumental in getting us to Boston last year to mm-hmm. speak there. Yes. 
So he has been writing and saying how much he appreciates the show and the kind of work we're doing, and that means a lot to us. And we appreciate the work that he's doing in Boston with the, with the Boston Vegetarian Society. Absolutely. And uh, one other thing, we want to talk about Plant Eater Across America. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a guy on our forums named Plant Eater, um, he just graduated from college. And what he wants to do, he decided, I think over the winter at some point, I, re- I remember him kind of kicking the idea around in the chat room. You can go to our chat room at veganfreak.com. Uh, please stop by. But I remember him kicking this idea around in the chat room where he said, you know, look, I think I'm going to ride my bike. He lives in Georgia, from Georgia to Portland, Oregon. So he's on the way now. Yep, he just left. I think he's right now in Alabama. He's in Alabama. <laughs> Lucky him. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's in Alabama. You know, I'm pretty confident we have no listeners in Alabama. I'm pretty sure we don't. I've never heard from anyone in Alabama. No. There used to be someone on the forums from Alabama, but I think she moved. Oh, she did. <laughs> I think she did. So, yeah. That's right. That's right. So I bet you we have no listeners in Alabama. Watch. Next week we'll have an email from Alabama. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're in Alabama, send us a send us a note. Yeah. Um, but anyway, he's in Alabama right now. He's uh, working his way up there, and um, he's doing it. He doesn't have a lot of cash, you know, so he's doing it with donations and... Uh, if you're on the way that he's going, he's looking for food, he's looking for a place to stay, and he's a good guy. There's no question. Yeah, and he's got his laptop with him, and he's doing updates regularly and some posting some pictures. And so we will put the link uh, for his website on, and you can go check it out. And if you feel like helping him out, you can give him a little donation, a little PayPal cash. Or if you're going to be along his way, as, as he describes his route, uh, stop and say hi or give him some food. It's a vegan-powered bike ride. It is. And he's at planteater.net. Yeah, okay. So he's a uh, vegan powered and he's he's it's plant across America, man. He's going for it. <laughs> and uh, I really admire that. That's that's pretty cool. It is. And it he's is just really doing cool. it and uh, he's doing it with his friend the vegan wanderer. Cool. So if you see two kind of weird looking tattoo guys on bikes <laughs> uh with I think they both have really short hair. So And Plant has a vegan tattooed on his head. Yeah, he does. So you can't miss kind that. Kind of an exclamation point. Mm-hmm. How big? It's an impact, 120 <laughs> yeah. point. Uh, black with red. Uh-huh. And uh, he has that on his head tattooed. Um, so if you see somebody with vegan tattooed on his head, black and red, with an exclamation point, that's plenty. Although I hope he's wearing his helmet so you can't see it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I also know that he has a moose pickle on his ass. But don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> Dirty. No. Um, <laughs> That's true. <laughs> if you're on the forums, you'll understand. You'll understand why. And if you don't, <laughs> if you are on the forums, then you should be. Um, all right. So it, that's plenty. That's about it for our shout outs and thank yous and all that stuff. And if you ever want to get in touch with us, you know how. Podcast at VeganFreak.com. If you want to send stuff to us, we love to get goodies in the mail. We do. <laughs> so much fun. Uh, it makes us feel centered. It does. <laughs> <laughs> and no. our snail mail address is on our website, I believe. It's P.O. Box 276 Colton, C-O-L-T-O-N, New York, 136. Two five. There you go. Uh, we live in a town with no stoplights. Yeah, I think that's cool. I think it's weird. <laughs> okay, but uh, we need to do a couple quick announcements and a giveaway. Yeah. Give it away, give it away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't help but think of that song. You know? <laughs> that, that was so popular when we were in college. It was. It drove me insane. All the frat boys love that song. I know. I so overdosed on hearing the Red Hot Chili Peppers. I so overdosed on anything. <laughs> I mean, a, a, the Red Hot Chili Peppers and um, who else did we... Uh, they used to hear a lot that the frat boys liked in college. Mm. You could just walk around and hear it blaring out of these massive houses. Uh, Stone Temple Pilots. Stone Temple Pilots <laughs> and Jesus Jones. Oh. All this bad 90s yeah. music, right? Uh, but no, chili, the, the Red Hot Chili Peppers aren't necessarily bad, but... You know, overdosed. I mean, yeah, I overdosed on that particular era of them. I haven't heard their new album yet, uh, but I you know, I don't really have much desire to. Yeah, all the 90s bands are coming back. Pearl Jam has a new album. Yeah, I know, I know. It's weird. Hmm. I don't know. I heard the Pearl Jam album was good, too, but yeah. I have not listened to that either. Um, but anyway, I want to make a couple announcements uh, related to Vegan Freak stuff. Um, first off, I want to say that Dan Pizer, the smoking vegan, vulgar vegan, whatever you want to call him, his book, Dispatches from Hell, A Vegan's Guide to Love, Sex, and Other Suicidal Tendencies. Is that right? The right thing? Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've read this book so many times through editing, and so is Jenna. Yeah, me too. It's an excellent book, though. It's funny. It's uh, it's also sweet. It's got a funny side to it, a sweet side to it. Um, it's kind of a little bit autobiography mixed into it, and it's just about a vegan guy trying to find some love, mm-hmm. you know, and and some advice about finding love as a vegan, and some pretty good sex stuff in there too. And uh, it's a great book. So, Dispatches from Hell is coming out this coming week. Yep, we so should have copies by the end of the week. We should have had copies already, but we had a little snafu with the cover 
Um, and we probably didn't edit the thing as quickly as we should have. But uh, anyway, the snafu with the cover has been resolved, so we should have copies of the book at the end of the week coming up. And we're going to give away a copy of Dispatches from Hell mm-hmm. this week on the show. Mm-hmm. The first person that calls our voicemail line at 267-295-1944. The first person that calls and says, you know, I want the copy of Dispatches from Hell. The first person that we get the voicemail from, you get a copy of it. Make sure you enclose your email address in the voicemail. You know, let us know what your email address is. And we'll send you a copy of Dispatches from Hell. And this is open to anyone anywhere in the world. Yes, we will send it anywhere. We're not like some cheesy corporation, like, only open to the residents of United States of America. And all the, you know, no, no. We will celebrate veganism anywhere in the world. So if you're in Nigeria and you're a vegan and you want to call, we'll send the fucking book to Nigeria. Mm-hmm. So Dispatches from Hell, we're going to give that away. And we will have Dan on the show at some point to talk about his book. Um, also, another thing I want to talk, talk to you about very quickly is we're doing a fundraiser over at veganfreaks.org for Shaq, for the Shaq folks, for their uh, appeals. And if you don't know about the, sh- the the whole thing going on with Stop Hunting Animal Cruelty, and uh, Josh Harper was on our show back in January, right? I don't remember. Go back was. in the archives. Yeah. In January, Josh was on our show, and he describes kind of what went on. Um, what's going on with them is a travesty, and they need all the help they can get. So what we're going to do is we're selling 10 copies of Vegan Freak and 5 copies of Dispatches from Hell, uh, Vegan Freak is 16, and Dispatch from Hell is 15. That includes postage anywhere in the world. If you're in the U.S., it's going to be priority mail, so you get it in a couple days. Um, and we're going to take all the money we raise from that, minus the postage, and give it to the Shack Defense Fund. So we're looking at giving them about 200 bucks if we can sell all these books. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you want to look at that, go to veganfreaks.org and let us you know, buy a book. It would really help them out. Mm-hmm. And um, they need all the help they can get. They need the, some cash, and we're going to try to do that. Uh, one other thing, quickly. Do you want to talk about it? Sure. Uh, we just started up, uh, a lot of you know our original blog at veganfreaks.org. Uh, we're starting up a second blog, um, but it's not just the two of us. It's a vegan freak group blog, and we've invited some of uh, the people we know to uh, help us out, and we're all going to be posting. So it's the two of us. It's Misanthropy and Dino and Ranting Steve from the forums. Absolutely. So uh, the five of us have been posting just about all things vegan. And yeah. And uh, what we're going to do is update that a little more frequently than veganfreaks.org because veganfreaks.org, we update it. But that tends to be just for Jenna and I mm-hmm. and kind of stuff that we're thinking about or, or kicking around. But the other blog, the gr- it's called groupblog.veganfreaks.org. If you go there, that's updated almost every day and it has news stuff on it, personal reflections, things from things from all of us and it's actually uh looks like it's gonna shape it to be a pretty good blog so all right now that we're like 10 minutes into the show uh <laughs> actually more like more, 15 16 oh hell we spent 16 <laughs> minutes doing this shit well we got a lot of stuff it's been a while though you know yeah it has so it has um but anyway we should really get into the <laughs> i was gonna say meat of the show uh, that's not vegan there you go so not vegan. <laughs> not at all so 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 not vegan but um anyway I, I was thinking today, um, you know, a couple weeks ago we got a new dog. Mm-hmm. You know, I talk about like it's a new, like it's a product. We got a new dog. <laughs> new dog. <laughs> <laughs> a brand new dog. Yeah. Um, no, Emmy came into our family a couple weeks ago and she's adjusting really well. She's been awesome. Yeah, she's been kicking She's so in. cute. She, <laughs> she is really cute. So uh, for those of you that don't know the story of Emmy, we, um, we had this weak moment one day or, I don't know, sensitive or thoughtful moment. I don't know what you want to call it. Where we decided that we were going to go to the pound and pick up a dog. Because I think it was Nell's fault because she put up a, a, a thing about Pet Finder on yeah. the forums. And we looked at the, all the pictures. I think that's true. That so she it, put it did it. About, about Pet Finder. <laughs> and we went over to a pound, local pound that was very full. Um, and it's a, it's a no-kill shelter or, um, I don't know. I got into an argument with somebody on our blog about how no-kill shelters are essentially just as bad. Um, I'm not going to get into that now. But um, anyway, we went over there and we picked up Emmy. And she's been awesome. You know, she's really been working working out well with us. And she's just adjusted right away to the to, to everything. And she's awesome. Mm-hmm. She's this cool little dog. She's like this mix of German Shepherd and Chow and who the hell knows what else. Who knows? And she's just really happy and really calm and very... The police just went by. That's uh, weird. Yeah, we have no... Uh, just very quick segue <laughs> ADD Bob um, very quick segue we have no police where we live there is no local police force where we live so if anything goes wrong here you can't call you can call the police but it's the, it's the state police state or you, police or the county sheriff well the sheriff just went by mm. the sheriff they're assholes 
Mm-hmm. They are fuckers because I had to go to them once for a problem I had. I hate to bring the law into my life, but they are assholes because I went to a problem I had with them where I was getting some, some threats via email and they ignored me. So I don't like seeing the police go by. <laughs> bothers me. That and one day we're driving down the road and they have the, the tendency around here. I don't know if this happens anywhere else. But they'll be going the other way mm. or along the highway, and they'll turn around and pull you over. Yeah, but they have the, the detector going. Yeah, they have the detector going, so that the state police pulled us over for that, going yeah. the other way. And the, the the sheriff pulled us over because our thing was out of due. Or yeah, out of, our inspection, was, <laughs> our out inspection of was out of date. So he yeah. turned around and pulled us over for that. So anyway, getting back to Emmy, Anyway. Sorry about that. <laughs> I, just, I don't like to see the police go by because they aren't around here much, and I like that. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think the police need to be around here. Because most people around here deal with their own shit, and mm-hmm. it's, it's good, and uh, it's nice not to have the police around, because they're mostly assholes. Um, <laughs> anyway, I'm sure I offended somebody out there. It should come as no surprise to you that I don't like the police. <laughs> Agents of state repression. Um, anyway, no. When you need the police, they're never there, right? I, I don't know. I'm going to stop talking okay, about Okay, major segue here. Okay. Get back into <laughs> Yes. Now there's some guy out there walking by our house who looks like the fucking Unabomber. <laughs> no, he really does. You didn't say him. Yeah, I saw him. He had his hood up, yeah. Yeah, he looked yeah, like yeah. a Unabomber. Yeah. Maybe that's who the police are after. Maybe. Okay, but to get back to Emmy. Uh, so she's selling in really well. And um, when we first got Emmy, first brought Emmy home, she was kind of getting used to things. And I was listening to <laughs> I was listening to some Black Flag when we had her around. Uh, when we first got her in the house, you know, and first got her here, she was in my office, and I've been listening to Black to this, to to Black Flag, and there's this. Do you know the song "Gimme Gimme Gimme"? You know, so I, I would every every so often I play "Gimme Gimme Gimme," and I would go "Emmy Emmy Emmy," and so she gets into the song. She loves the song "Gimme Gimme Gimme." I put it on, and she gets all excited. <laughs> or if you call it, you know, if you say, if you just say "Gimme Gimme Gimme," she comes. You yeah. know, if you say "Emmy Emmy Emmy," <laughs> what is she? I'm surprised she's not at my feet right now. She's sleeping good yes so it's really funny you know you start you start playing uh you start playing some black flag and she's like <laughs> just do that gimme give gimme give gimme give and she comes running i need some it's more great she loves the song gimme and gimme gimme i can't argue with her musical taste it's a good song it is one, one of my favorites so she gets really excited when you play gimme 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 and she like does these little jumps you know and when she's really excited mm-hmm. she comes running and she's got these she, her ears like our, our lab has these floppy ears, right? But Emmy has these ears that like, stick straight up in air. So when she's all excited, they go back. <laughs> <laughs> it's flat against her head. She gets all like, she gets all into it. She's so anyway, so cute. Emmy's doing well. But today I was I was singing Rise Above to her and she liked that too. She liked Rise Above? Yeah. Yeah. So. That's off the same album. Yeah, she the likes Black Which Black. I can't remember right now off the top of my head. I'm sure me everybody's either. out there yelling it at me. <laughs> uh, but Emmy likes Black Flag. Mole, on the other hand, likes Minor Threat. Mole loves Minor Threat. He loves Minor Threat. <laughs> yep. All you have to do is shout to him, What the, what the fuck, fuck have you done? done? He's <laughs> <laughs> like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he loves that. Yeah. So every so often we'll put that stuff on. Uh, we'll put on like Minor Threat and just mosh around with Mole. He loves that. He loves to mosh. Oh, he, but he gets violent. He does. He starts getting bitey. He start, yeah, he starts like kind of jumping up and he gets really excited. Give me, give me. <laughs> it's not... I need some more. Yeah. So. Give me, give me, give me. Don't ask what for. What's there you go. So anyway, I want to talk about Emmy very briefly because <laughs> she's doing well. And she's awesome. I can't believe that she spent a year in the pound. I know. You know? I can't believe that someone could abs- could drop her off like that. I don't understand. She is so sweet. I don't understand how someone could do it. I mean, I don't understand how someone could just take a dog that you've that you've had for a while and it, it just leave them somewhere. I don't know. I don't get it. I mean, they didn't just let her loose, right? They took her to a shelter at least. But yeah. Still, it it feels it feels weird. Mm-hmm. So anyway, Emmy's doing well. Yep. She is. She really is. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have another drink of my Eric Marcus coffee. <laughs> ah, yes. Yes, he turned us on to this new... I, did he Did he talk about it on his podcast, did he say? He said he did. Okay. I didn't listen to that show, though. Anyway, um, so, yeah, he this new coffee press kind of the contraption, and it's really nice. It, it makes, makes great really good coffee. coffee. <laughs> Absolutely. We ran into Eric Marcus near Ithaca last... Uh, not, well, not long ago. Yeah, a couple weeks ago. Yeah, we went over... We He gave us... Uh, a cup of this coffee, and I immediately had to have one, of course. Yes. One of these contraptions. The AeroPress is cool to me by the people who make the aerobies, you know? <laughs> and actually, it makes really wonderful coffee. Mm-hmm. Um, it makes really good espresso. 
But anyway, uh, we are like veering way off topic. We are. But that's okay. It's our show. It is. You know, we do whatever we want. Indeed. That's the beautiful part. That's nice, yes. And we don't have any corporate sponsors to please. We don't. And we don't have to worry about the FCC. Mm-mm. So we do whatever we want. And I think in that case, it means I'm going to play some Spanish hardcore for you. Excellent. So this is Mundo Matadero. <laughs> Okay, that was Mundo Matadero. And for those of you that don't speak Spanish, um, here's some lyrics for you. Kill your brother or sister, destroy your neighbor, putting an end to everything. It's your destiny. We are here to injure. We are here to suffer. We are here to kill. We are here to die. Earth's veins are polluted and wounds come out over its body. Cries the planet, tears of blood, wishing not seeing you, not to hate you. I didn't translate this, by the way. Science progresses in labs and farms while the human plague goes forward. Species condemned to extinction thanks to the children of civilization. Indiscriminate hunting, granted massacres, barbarism organized by the human race, earth planet, slaughterhouse world, slaves of hate by God's grace. Slaves of rancor, we buy the earth. Slaves of hate by the supreme race. Slaves of rancors like souls in grief, earth planet, slaughterhouse world, earth's veins are polluted. That is a group from Spain. Mm -hmm. so, and go. Mundo Materero means slaughterhouse world. Yes, indeed. Yes. Sorry. I should have said so. Hmm, so. <laughs> cool. Yep. That's so cool to hear uh, AR 
songs from other places. Indeed. And uh, next week, we will have a, sh- a song from, from Evo from Portugal. Sweet. Yeah. And we've got some things in the queue, too. Uh, some, some things folks sent us. So we really mm-hmm. thank people who sent us uh, Demo. Who has sent us music in the past? Sent us some music a while ago, and uh, we'll get that in the show. Angry Duck sent some stuff. We, cool. We've got things in the queue. So nice. And we've got those stuff from Charlotte. We just got. And yeah, we got yeah. all kinds of goodies. So we will be playing things on and off as we have time. Excellent. Excelente. But now We're we have news. Some new stuff. Right. Um, I don't know. I. I have some Google alerts that I follow. I, I have one for animal rights. I have one for animal liberation. I have one for veganism. And uh, I, I've been reading some stuff about the situation in the UK lately, and some of the things that Tony Blair is saying are just, I think, really problematic. Um, there was one report that where Blair has come out and condemned the appalling activities of animal rights extremists, extremists, of course, that's what they are, mm-hmm. and pledged his support to animal testing. So we have Tony Blair, uh, Bush's lapdog, of course, <laughs> coming out and uh, <laughs> and you know making this really strong stand against. Uh, animal liberation gets animal rights and supporting animal testing and he says that you know part of what this article is trying to say is that the proposal comes after extremists <laughs> extremists mm-hmm. notice the use here mm-hmm. extremists threatened to publish the names of shareholders and drugs company GlaxoSmithKline on the internet unless they dump their shares in an article for the Sunday Telegraph Mr. Blair wrote the appalling details of the campaign of intimidation which include grave robbing show the depths to which the animal extremists are prepared to stoop now, there was grave robbing, and people were convicted of it and went went to prison for 40 years, but that was with a completely different thing and not related to this campaign. So what they're trying to do is tie in somebody else, and by the way, I don't support grave robbing, okay? Like, I don't think that's a valid tactic. No. no. <laughs> what they did is they dug up somebody's grandmother, you know? That's pretty gross. Yeah, and they held the body for a while, and it was just, okay, whatever. Mm-hmm. So, but this, what what these folks are doing with GlaxoSmithKline has, is, to my knowledge, not related to the grandmother being dug up. So uh, Blair goes on to say the letter writing campaign just launched. Lo- it's a letter writing campaign. Okay. Mm-hmm. He's tying together these two things, right? First, mm-hmm. you've got him tying together a grave robbery, which is completely fucked up regardless, mm-hmm. right? Yes. And you've got him tying that with a letter writing campaign. Now, grave robbing, letter writing, two very different things mm-hmm. yet linked together and both called extreme. Okay. Letter writing is extreme. Since when? That is not a radical, you know, letter writing is perhaps the easiest, you know, like, least radical thing you can do. Yeah. It's not like, you're not like you're putting anthrax in the fucking letters, right? It's letter writing. The letter writing campaign just launched against Glax- GlaxoSmithKline shareholders shows why we must step up efforts to support and protect individuals and companies engaged in life-saving medical research. Notice it's always called life-saving medical research. Of it's course. not called penis-stiffening medical research because that's what it usually is about, right? Right. I mean, how often is this stuff really meant to save anyone's life? Right. It's, it's more often than not, it's like Viagra or some other kind of things like that, you know? I mean, yeah. the medical industry itself doesn't always focus on the life-saving things. And they certainly, did, they certainly haven't cured any of the major diseases. Really? So. Well, I mean, there might probably be out there going like polio, you know. Okay, like well, that. yeah. <laughs> but, sure. You yeah. know, nevertheless, we can't forget that this is, that GlaxoSmithKline is a corporation. Every corporation in this entire world that's, that's held by shareholders, right, should have one purpose, and that purpose is to make a profit. Mm-hmm. If that company has any any stated goal except delivering value to shareholders, the CEO of that company should be fired because that's what the company should be doing, delivering value to shareholders. We have to remember that they're going to deliver the value to shareholders first and foremost, and only secondarily will they then solve the world's problems or things like that. I mean, this reminds me of like Oryx and Crake, right? Which is this uh, really excellent novel by uh, Margaret Atwood, right? Mm-hmm. And in that book, and I hope I'm not... Fuck. I'm going to give it away. Who cares? Read the damn book. But I'm going to give a little bit of it away. There is a, uh, and I know some of you other go, no, not a spoiler. It's not a big spoiler. It's a tiny one. Um, in that book, there is a, a, a biotech company that, you know, has cured so many diseases. And science has cured so many diseases. It's gotten so good that they decide they got to figure out a way to make more money. So they buy a vitamin company and they put diseases into the vitamins that they already have the cure for. But they hold off for a while. So they're actually kind of extracting money out of the mm-hmm. out of the consumers and mm-hmm. things. But uh, I didn't give away a whole lot because it's only a tiny proportion mm-hmm. of the story. But we got to remember that these are companies that are made to earn money. And, you know, Blair says they're engaged in life-saving medical research. And it may, in fact, save some lives. But let's not forget that their primary goal is to, is to create cash. And their primary goal is not to save lives. That's secondary to their main goal, which is profit. 
Well, it's true, plus they also say that to paint this black and white picture. Either we test on animals and save lives, or people will die. Yeah, I mean, it's what... Um it's what Francione calls the burning house scenario. Mm-hmm. Right? He says that every time that we we deal with with animals, it's like this idea where we we're running into a burning house and we can either save the human or the dog, right? And he says every time we deal with animals, it's treated like a burning house scenario, mm-hmm. you know. And it's used for food. You hear people say you hear people say it like, well, if we didn't eat them, you know, what we do with them and all this other stuff. You hear it all the time. And so it's always like any use of animals is always juxtaposed against our kind of suffering you know mm-hmm. it's like well if we don't use animals we'll die yeah no it's not always like that you know and that's why this little tiny article really upset me and that's why tony blair what good is he anyway <laughs> you know i don't know he, i mean bush yeah. at least is a fucking idiot you know blair is not an idiot i know but it, that that he's using the tactic that that bush used to, to invade iraq i mean tying 9-11 to saddam hussein who had nothing to do with 9-11 now he's and he's tying animal extremists, the grave robbing to yep. a lettering. Campaign. Well, that's exactly yeah, it's the same kind of tactic. Well, and you know, mm-hmm. there we also talk on, on our blog uh, about uh, on this counterpunch article that talks about the how red is the new green. You know, green is the new red. Mm-hmm. You know that everybody who you know eco terrorists are now being uh, people who are working for animal liberation or e- against ecological threats against the earth are now being called terrorists, and that's just wrong. And he's doing the same thing here. Uh, but it goes on to say, the Prime Minister said that the planned company law reform bill would allow directors to keep their home addresses private to protect them from intimidation. Mr. Blair also said that he intends, at a rare move for any minister, to sign the people's petition in support of animal testing in the UK. So, there's Blair and the government, of course, of course, without any doubt, stepping in on the side of capital, right? I mean, where else would they go? You know, they're going to step in on the side of business because that's where the most cash is, you know? And of course. If we pretend that the state is really about anything else besides supporting capitalism... We're just insane mm-hmm. because its primary goal is to help businesses make money. Yep. I think. And, you know, it's no surprise that the state, whatever the state in the West, is owned pretty much by businesses anyhow. Completely. So I'm uh, I'm out of breath now. Okay. So we'll get on. I'll read the next one then. Do it. This one, I think Eric Marcus already mentioned it on his podcast, but I haven't listened to it yet, so I'm not sure what he said about it. But um, this Well, is he interviewed the guy. Oh, did uh, he? Not that guy, no, but not the guy, but someone else associated involved, with it. Yeah. Right. Uh, animal rights activist who filmed egg farm draws six month sentence. Uh, an animal rights activist drew a maximum six month jail sentence Tuesday for sneaking onto New York State's largest egg farm to videotape thousands of chickens confined to small wire cages. Adam Duran, 26, was convicted earlier this month on three counts of criminal trespassing, a misdemeanor. He was sentenced to two consecutive terms of 90 days, fined $1,500, ordered to serve 100 hours of community service, and placed on probation for a year. Duran denied breaking into the shed in three night times visits in 2004, saying he climbed in through a hole in the wall. He also said he had no intention of removing birds from the farm operated by Rochester-based supermarket chain Wegmans, where 700,000 hens <laughs> produce more than half a million eggs a day. A day. A day. God Two damn. women who accompanied him took away 11 hens because in every case they were sick or dying, and there was this, this feeling that they needed veterinary care. Duran testified during his three-day trial in Lyons, 40 miles east of Rochester. Uh, Duran's lawyer said he hasn't expected to him he hadn't expected him to receive any jail time. He said it is excessive. Wegmans to come in and ask for the maximum and get it is disturbing. Mm-hmm. Because he's had no prior criminal record, and this is a low-level misdemeanor. Well, the thing is, is that you got to remember it, what that says is that Wegman's pushed mm-hmm. Wegman's grocery store. If you live in the Northeast, uh, I think they're only really in New York, Pennsylvania. New, are they in Jersey? I don't know. They're in New York and Pennsylvania, though. Yeah, Wegman's. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't shop there. Don't shop there. Number one. <laughs> no. Oh. oh God. Number two. <laughs> This is going to take a little while. Mm-hmm. We should just stop it. Okay, sorry about that. Dog barking. Uh, at nothing outside. I think there's some people at the bar on the bridge. <laughs> you can see a bar. We have a bar, a local town bar. For those of you that are subscribers, you know about the bar we've told you. But there's a bar on the bridge right around the corner from my house, and you can see it from here. And whenever people go into the bar, the dog barks. And they, uh, they have to come outside to smoke because yeah. all the bars are non-smoking in New York State. So. Yep. Yeah. But anyway, uh, we were talking about this Wegman story, and um, Wegman's pushed, the Wegman's grocery store chain pushed for the, the stiffest possible sentence here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I said stiff. <laughs> <Pushed for> the- <laughs> uh-huh. um, no, they pushed for the stiffest possible sentence, and I think that 
they're fuckers for that you know it's like it's spiteful yeah and yeah and they're they're always saying how they're proud they are of their facilities and yet they don't want people seeing them of so course. You always why not that. i mean it says here in the this article um the trio were arrested last summer and duran produced a short documentary t- titled wegman's cruelty you can go see online oh, yeah. uh that was screened at a rochester movie house the film contained footage of hen court Corpses lying in cages with live hens, a few that had fallen into deep manure pits, and others with their heads apparently caught in wire cages. Mm-hmm. And, it, you know, it goes on to say about 95% of the nation's eggs are produced at cage and hen egg farms. But that that is actually typical for the mm-hmm. exploitation of hens. I mean, mm-hmm. they're, they're just considered economic units, right? And, you know, you when you're calculating how much, how much you can produce in a hen house like that or in a laying house like that, you decide... Okay, well, I can afford to lose X number of birds because by having these conditions that ca- cause the birds to die, I can actually squeeze that much more profit, that much more, that many more eggs out of these birds. Mm-hmm. It's ridiculous. But I think we need to let Wegmans know just how how problematic their whole situation is. Mm-hmm. I mean, first off, if you shop at Wegmans, don't do it anymore. And you should let them know why. You should get go to their website and let them know, look, I'm not going to shop at your store anymore, and this is why. Because... You know, you push for this maximum sentence. You tried to hide these facts, et cetera, et cetera. So I would get in, in touch with them and let them know because they're very responsive to, to the customer, of course. Mm-hmm. They say they are. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they also have this bullshit about being one of the best places in the world to work and this other crap. But they're aggressively anti-union. Yes, they are. And, you know, I don't I don't buy for a second that Wegmans is one of the best places in the world to work. Uh, maybe it is. Maybe it's great. But who cares? I mean, the point of the matter is that they they were kind of caught with their pants down. Mm-hmm. In this situation, they were pretending like, you know, they they had something here, and uh, they were caught, and they tried to they they pushed for this maximum sentence. I think as a as a way of revenge, and you know, it was a way of kind of scaring people off. Mm-hmm. And I can't believe that this judge gave it to them. I know. Yeah. I know. It's, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous for it's, just going to to film something. Yep, and uh, it's really absurd. Well, it wasn't just filming something, right? They took eleven hens. Yeah, but Durand was the one who got the sentence, and That's he, true. he didn't take any hens. So, uh, and you know, the other thing is a misdemeanor and the guy's going to jail for six months Mm -hmm. for a misdemeanor. Mm -hmm. Come on. That's ridiculous. So if you live in New York, Pennsylvania or anywhere where there's a Wegmans, you should let them know how much they suck. Mm -hmm. You really should. All right. What else? You have another article. Oh, yeah. Um, I found this also. This is kind of interesting. Uh, This is an article by Charlotte Laws, PhD, and um, she writes about how she was contacted by the FBI to go talk to them about quote unquote animal rights philosophy and she went to FBI headquarters and gave his little presentation on animal rights philosophy to the FBI and she writes about her experience and I will post the link it's in American Chronicle and it's really weird the way she talks about it I mean they just kind of want to they kind of want to understand what's going on um, she says though that she, her plan was to serve as an ambassador for the animal rights movement and to convey through her lecture to them the truth about how animals suffer under human oppression as well as to present philosophical arguments as to why animals are of equal value to humans and worthy of equal consideration. And she says that they were fairly receptive to what she had to say. Um, and uh, she also mentions in there that FBI agents like comparing themselves to movies a lot, <laughs> which is kind of scary, right? Because mm-hmm. they all feel like they're in a movie, you know? Oh, great. Um, <laughs> and hi, Mr. FBI. Um, yeah, we're laughing at you. Uh, no. <laughs> Please don't raid my home. Uh, anyway, but she's talking about going to talk to them, and um, it, it was really weird, uh, this article. I mean, I if the FBI called me and asked me to come talk to them, I'm not sure that I would. Would you? No. No, you wouldn't? No, I wouldn't. Even if they told you we just want to understand what your movement's about, wouldn't you feel weird speaking for a movement? Yep. Or being the ambassador for a movement. Yep. Uh, I mean, I would give them 15 or 20 books to read. You know, yeah. you want to know what the movement's about? Read these books. Right. You know, uh, also, knowing that the FBI is involved in infiltrating various kinds of left causes and things like that, I, I think that's a little strange. Too. Yeah, exactly. So, this article is interesting, though. Uh, I won't really... It, it's not the sort of thing I could read a lot of on the air and have it make any, any sense, but I found it to be kind of an interesting article that... Uh, Interested, they tied in at the same time as I got these books from AK Press. Um, they, they have this great program called Friends of AK. Have we talked about it before? I don't know. Anyway, you pay 20 bucks a month. AK Press is a radical press out in California. They, they publish anarchist, anti capitalist, all kinds of good stuff. They distribute our book. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're really good to us that way. 
And um, they have this Friends of AKA. You pay 20 bucks a month for, I think, a minimum of three or four months. And every month they send you whatever new titles they're producing. So every month or every other month in the mail, we get a couple books, a new DVD. And it's cool because you're getting all this great stuff that's coming out about anarchist theory, about like kind of left theory. And um, just the other day, I got these two great books. And the one that I think is really good is, is called Igniting Revolution, Voices in Defense of the Earth. And this is a, a great compilation of essays that kind of talks about um, environmental groups and kind of animal liberation groups resisting, as they say, the destructive trends set by industry and government. So this talks about some of those things going on. And uh, Charlotte Law, actually, the woman who did this little talk for the FBI, actually has an article in here. Josh Harper has an article in here. Um, there's a lot of good stuff in this that, that talks about the kind of relationship between the government and the state and movements. And I really recommend this book very highly. It's edited by Stephen Best, which should be a name familiar to many of you. Mm -hmm. uh, and Anthony J. Nocella, the second. So they also were the ones behind Terrorists or Freedom Fighters, mm -hmm. uh, a book by Lanterns. Excellent book as well. Mm -hmm. Excellent edited compilation, similar to this one in, in many ways. So this is an excellent compilation. I, uh, there's some really stunningly good articles in here, and uh, I recommend it very highly. But another one that came is also called Talking the Walk, and I haven't had a chance to look for this very much, but it looks like a really good book too because it talks about kind of how to... Discuss and sp uh, they say it on the back cover. Discuss and spin issues of race, race and racial justice, and that's cool because um, not only could you take from this some stuff about race and racial justice, but some of the tactics they talk about I think could be used for spinning and talking about some of the things in the animal rights movement. You know, not that I think we need to spin what we're doing because what we what we do is really, I think, you know, ethically pretty solid. But I do feel like thinking about how we communicate with with people outside of the movement is very important. So, uh, two really good books from AK I recommend very highly. Yeah. That's all I have. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, and now uh, we're going to talk about some, some commercials. <laughs> and we don't typically watch commercials because we have TiVo and we fast forward through everything. Um, but the other night we were watching, actually watching live TV and we saw this one commercial and it was just amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and then someone, uh, Dan Winkler, uh, who's a li uh, listener to our show, uh, forwarded the link to another commercial that I hadn't seen. Um, but it's up on the web, uh, and it's from Burger King. Well, in, well, should we talk about, you want to talk about, play them and talk about them? Yeah. Play them back to back and then talk about them or play them, play we'll, one? We'll play one and then play the other right. and, well, we'll, and then we'll, we'll talk about it. This is the newest Burger King commercial that, uh, well, I'll just let you listen. Yeah. I am man, hear me roar, in numbers too big to ignore, and I'm way too hungry to settle for chick food Cause my stomach's starting to growl And I'm going on the prowl For a Texas double whopper Man, that's good Oh yes, I'm a guy I'll admit I've been fed quiche Way tofu, bye-bye Now it's for whopper beef I reach I will eat this meat Till my any turns into an alley I am star. I am incorrigible And I need to stop a big burger, beef, bacon, jalapeno, good thing down yeah! I am hungry I am, hungry. I am incorrigible I am mad The Texas Double Whopper Eat like a man, man That's right, if you eat tofu, you have a small penis <laughs> that commercial pisses me off so much. <laughs> well, the, the thing is, is it begins with this guy sitting in a restaurant with right. his girlfriend, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he served this little plate, some kind of frou-frou, a little plate of bougie food, mm -hmm. you know, with the little design and all that shit. Mm -hmm. And he gets up and starts singing the song. Right. It's ridiculous. It is. I made the, I mean, the song is bad enough to listen to it, but I made a list of the images and the images are really amazingly bad. Okay, so the guy starts and he, he like he said you said he's walking out of the restaurant and then he goes and joins all these guys walking out of out of Burger King holding these whoppers. And there's all these scenes of like all these guys coming together walking down the street. There's one scene where these guys are punching each other in the stomach. Yeah. Then there's a guy smashing a concrete block, an Asian guy <laughs> doing like, you know, his kung fu on this concrete block, of smashing it. Then they're walking up to these barrels of burning, and they pull out their underwear, and they're burning their underwear, and they're cheerleaders. <laughs> whitey tighties, though. Yeah, whitey tighties. Yeah. They're cheerleaders cheering them on. Of course. And then they all go, and they find this minivan, 
and they throw it over an overpass onto this dump truck. And then this guy's like, you know, this big muscle guy has his harness on and he's pulling the dump truck. But in order to tempt him to pull this dump truck, this woman in this like weird jumpsuit, tight, really tight jumpsuit, is like holding a burger on a shovel <laughs> and like pulling it. Yeah, he's pulling the dump truck. So, so okay, the only women in this commercial are the, fir- the woman, the girlfriend, who's right. like disgusted when the guy leaves, the cheerleaders, and this woman at the end in this, you know, really tight suit, tempting this guy with the burger. So, you know, they're all very sexualized, you know, typical, very feminine, cheering their guy on, you know, tempting them. Totally, you know, we can do a, a total sexual politics of meat analysis on them. You well, know, of course. The, the whole, you know, A, not A. Oh, yeah. Lessening the women. Can't eat chick food. No, quiche and quiche tofu. Quiche and are tofu are chick, chick, chick food. Yeah. And, you know, the only way to satisfy a man's hunger is to eat meat. 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 Yeah. So it's just absolutely mind boggling. And not just how anti, how, you know, it's very meat centered, but how anti feminist it is. How anti woman. Yeah, it's a Period. total backlash. Oh, absolutely. And, it, you know, since when are men a threatened species in this country? Yeah, right. You know, come on. Give me a break. You know, it, they all think like, I don't know. I, I, I think so many men feel threatened by, by women. That mm-hmm. This commercial is, is, I think, tapping into that. Mm-hmm. I don't understand why. I don't either. So um, Dan, who originally sent me the link, uh, has his own little analysis. And it's really interesting. Um the lyrics to the song are really interesting. You heard, as you heard, the guy, he's on the prowl, so he's a hunter, right? Of hunting, course. hunting that burger that Burger King, you know, will kill for you. Um, the song, then the lyrics say, I will eat this meat until my innie turns into an Audi. <laughs> <laughs> so he, Dan says, Are they really saying their product will make you so fat your belly button will turn inside out? No, I think innie and Audi are references to female and male genitalia, definitely. Of course. That's yeah, more of, of be course. a man. That is, you're a girl if you don't eat meat. You have to be a man. Yeah. Um, so then he says, Oh, and there are their banners that drop down that says, Eat this meat. Yeah, that's right. Eat this meat. Eat this meat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that, and then the guys are like punching each other in the stomach. It's yeah. all very homoerotic. It is. Well, which is what which is this guy, Dan points out. He says, like, and it sure sounds like to be a man, messages have been turned into a gay man. Is that you're saying you're, it's saying you're not a real man if you have anything to do with women, even during sex. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's good. Yeah. And then the, the whole the other image is that there's, he says, notice the label on the building in the street, Manhattan Tower. Which is almost man tower or man power. Oh, power tower. Hadn't thought of that. Phallic symbol. Yep. There's a traffic sign that has an arrow right only, mm-hmm. which is very also phallic, penis kind of, you know, thing, but also, you know, move to the right. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, being left is weak. Exactly. Womanly. So, and he's like, there's so many subtle details. Uh, that he said, there's there's nothing that's left to chance in this art. In this. No. And he, he said, oh, if, if vegans only had this kind of advertising executives, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, this is the thing is that um, teaching courses in visual media, the first thing that we teach students always in visual media is that very few things in professional visual media are an accident. Mm-hmm. You know, if someone's going to spend a, bi- a billion dollars on a commercial or however much it costs, I don't know, $20 million on, a, on an advertising campaign, and has images in it. They aren't going to do things by accident. They're not going to. Ch- they're not going to chance it. Mm-mm. Everything you see in that commercial, every tiny little thing in there, is minutely planned. There's no question about mm-hmm. it. One does not put all that stuff, all that money into a commercial without planning it out. You know, all the way. And so, yeah. I mean, he raises Dan raises a great point there. Definitely. Now the next one. Uh, are we ready to move on to the next one? Yeah, the next one's very similar. The next one's actually <laughs> quite similar. This is for TGI Fridays and. It's four guys sitting around a table. One of the guys is the O-Face guy from The Office. <laughs> no, no, Office Face. Office Face. <laughs> uh, and uh, three of them are eating meat. And the one guy is eating a broccoli, a vegetable, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, that's kind of where you're at. It's a very noisy commercial. And I'm surprised it's so noisy. But you'll hear. Here are your fanatics for platters. Oh, yeah. Beef. Pork. Real. <laughs> Vegetable medley! Sausage! Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Meat lovers.
Grills Rejoice. It's Friday's new Meat Fanatics Grill menu featuring our flat iron steak. Now just $8.99 for a limited time. Everyone could use more Fridays. Beef! And of course there, you know, the flat iron steak, whatever they call it, it's dripping with blood. You know, literally in the picture, there is blood kind of dripping from the mm-hmm. steak. And, uh, you know, so the guy goes, vegetable medley, and he's got the the broccoli on a fork. And then they all, all his friends look at him like, you know, what are you, a girl? You know? So, and it, it's just another one of those commercials. Like yeah. Completely, <sighs> completely frustrating in that way. Indeed. And uh, I guess, I guess this is like the new marketing for men, Apparently. right? Apparently. It's marketing, marketing the male pleasure. You know, Indeed. It's like, be a man. Don't yep. be, don't be cowed into being a, a vegetarian. Yeah. You, know, you be a man and yeah. seize your manhood. Eat that meat. Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> but I have another response to those these two ads, and <laughs> we can probably tack this onto our "If You're Not Vegan Yet" segment. Well, there you go. This article is simply entitled "Impotence." <laughs> <laughs> this is on the site GoVeg.com, which is part of PETA. Um, every year, impotence or erectile dysfunction affects millions of men across the world, with one study showing that as many as half of men over the age of 40 are impotent at least part of the time. <laughs> Originally, it was thought that impotence was caused by anxiety, but according to the Erectile Func- Dysfunction Institute, wow, they have an institute for that. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> of Didn't course. We, we were talking about earlier about biography. Yes, I know. Well, that's, uh, that's mentioned here. Okay, according to the Erectile Dysfunction Institute, up to 90% of all cases of impotence are physical as opposed to psychological. That's right. High cholesterol, obesity, diabetes, prostate cancers or inflammations, and hormonal imbalances cause the vast majority of all cases of impotence. The good news is that medical science has proved that all of these conditions can be virtually virtually eliminated and even cured with a low-fat vegan diet. (laughs) Viagra and other anti-impotence drugs may get you through the night, but a vegetarian diet can get you through your life. Numerous physicians and nutritionists agree that the best way to prevent artery blockage, as well as multiple other conditions that cause impotence, is to eat a diet high in fiber, including plenty of fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. Makes you poop. Indeed. These foods will scrub the plaque off the arterial walls, get your blood flowing, and your love life going again in no time. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so there you go there you go so you can eat all those whoppers but ain't gonna do a whole lot for you uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> so yes what else you got there uh this is thing another thing it was a related article on high cholesterol mm. um it, it also says that everyone knows that vegetarians have much lower rates of heart disease because of the saturated fat and cholesterol in meat are what's responsible for most heart disease. But did you know that when the gunk clogs the arteries from your heart, it shuts down blood flow to your other vital organ? <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> the most common cause of decreased blood flow to your vital organs is ath- ath- atherosclerosis or hardening of the arteries. So it goes on to talk about Neil Barnard, of course, then. Uh, and if your arteries it. get hard, something else can't. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, and actually, there's an interesting point that, that a lot of people don't realize. Like, okay, they think high cholesterol foods, they think, you think beef. Mm-hmm. Um, but And so people, a lot of people give up red meat thinking it's going to do, do a lot for them. But it says here, contrary to popular opinion, chicken and many sea animals has even more cholesterol, calorie for calorie, than beef. I always heard it was shrimp that was really yep. high. Yep, cholesterol. actually, yeah. So... You think you're doing a good thing by eating more fish or whatever, and actually you're probably getting more cholesterol. You should just stop eating animals altogether. Exactly. Like, uh, stop consuming animals. Indeed. That's right. What else? That's all. That's all for the news. And yeah, that's all. And our, of news. our media analysis <laughs> <laughs> of those commercials. So thank you. Um, I know there's also a, a thread on the forums that, that we're talking about them, and In people were equally disgusted. Yeah. Yeah, so... So always pop over to our forums. We'd love to have you. Mm-hmm. What else? We have some advice. Uh, we got a, a voicemail a couple weeks ago uh, from someone who is vegan for ethical reasons but does not like vegetables. Yeah. So she was in this tough spot of trying to want to like vegetables and people posted all kinds of stuff on our forums about it. Yeah, they some really good advice. And um, the, the overwhelming... Uh, majority of people were like, you know, we feel really bad for you because they, they really wanted to help this person. <laughs> I think they really wanted because a lot of people are in the same boat. They went vegan and they didn't like veggies. That's, um, yeah. So, you know, it's a tough situation to be in. That's Suckville. Yeah, it is. So people had a lot of different suggestions. And, and one of their main things of advice is that um, this came from someone who saw Brenda's da- Brenda Davis, um, mm-hmm. who wrote the book Becoming Vegan, who's Good a book. nutritionist, Good book. Um, said that vegans who care about the animals also have the responsibility to eat, look, and be healthy to promote veganism with your life. I agree. 
So in order to do that, they said um, if you don't want to eat the fruits and veggies, there's apparently there's this stuff called Health Force Vitamin Mineral Green something or other that you can mix with soy milk or juice. There's no substitute, though, for eating vegetables. Exactly. Um, and other people have good uh, suggestions. Jordan Pattern says um, she likes this, the, the greens plus succulent, but also trying out different combinations of things in smoothies. Uh, maybe mix things like stews or chilies. That way there's like a sort of a medley of things, and the veggies get kind of covered over by the flavors of the spices and other things. So you make fruit smoothies. You know, if you if there's a fruit that you do like, mm-hmm. you know, make some smoothies. So you can't really taste, but you can drink it. Everybody's um, got like stews. One fruit. Stews and chilies are really yeah, good. That's true. Especially if you if you can eat the beans. Everybody likes chili. Yeah. Almost. I'm yeah. sure someone out there's like, I don't like chili. I'm sure we'll hear from you. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> I don't like chili, dear Bob. I hate chili. <laughs> Fuck you. <I'm laughs> Uh, we usually do hear from people like that. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Um, what else? Some other advice were that try and hide things <laughs> in pastas and stir-fry sauces. Um, leafy greens, for example, you can uh, – a smoothie and other good things, are, you know, people have recommended again. So some people said, like, if you don't like leafy greens, sort of blend them up and then hide them in pasta sauce because the person mentioned liking good idea. Um, pasta. and Or hide them in mashed potatoes mm. is another good one. Uh, make bubble, bubble and squeak, and squeak cause it was actually one of the suggestions. It'll make you um, bubble and squeak. Yeah. Some people suggest salad with lots of dressing, which isn't, you know, is gets the high in fat, but you're eating your vegetables. So true. that's good. True, true. Um, or something like a, a healthy dose of a nutritional yeast sauce uh-huh. on broccoli or cauliflower. That'll work. Definitely. Sorry. <laughs> Emmy was trying to eat the uh, the string. She wasn't trying um, to eat. She okay. got caught in oh, the string oh, from our okay. line. <laughs> Um, Ew, you just like sniffled I'm right sorry. into the mic. I was, I'm sorry. Gross. I was trying not to. <laughs> sorry, everyone. You should apologize to them. I am sorry, everyone. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't make you feel like crap. Okay. Um, and some people then took another uh, aspect and said that try different ways of preparing. Because some people realized that they didn't like vegetables because of the way they were cooked. So mm-hmm. Kyle said he was definitely in the in the I didn't like vegetables group, um, but then he decided that he really didn't like them cooked, so he started eating them raw, and he really liked them. Nice. You know what vegetable I hate? What? It's not a vegetable. I mean, it, it's a vegetable if you live in America and grew up and grew up eating American food in the 1970s, but it's not really a vegetable on its own. Mm-hmm. Mexicorn. I hate oh, that yeah. shit. It's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, for those of you that have not, what, who is calling us? I don't know. I'm probably my parents. People need to stop calling. Us. <laughs> anyway, uh, call our voicemail line, though. Um, <laughs> no. But anyway, the Mexico, if you grew up in the U.S. and you went to school in the 1980s, you had this stuff in your cafeteria lunch, probably. Right? Mm-hmm. Or you had it at home. I know some of you other probably love it. Some of you other probably hate it. But yeah, for those of you that don't know what it is, it's corn, like little bits of corn with bits of red and green bell pepper in it. Mm-hmm. But it tastes like ass. It, it does. doesn't sound disgusting, but it is. Because it's got the, it's, you know, the canned kind of bell peppery, which is just sort of overwhelms, and it's horrible taste. It just tastes like bad, bad. It just tastes bad. Yeah. It just tastes like ass. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, Mom. You know, she used to serve it to us when we were... She did, She stopped doing that, but she used to... I think we used to have it at home every so mm-hmm. often. So... Yeah. I don't know. Gross. I don't like it. We saw it in the uh, No, I like... Them. Yeah, I, I used to eat it in the cafeteria in school. It was gross. Yeah, it was. Yeah. You know what else? Cream corn. I used to love cream corn. I know. I can't. I don't. It's not about the texture of it. It's like snot. Well, it looks like puke. It does. <laughs> it does look like puke. Anyway. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, we're trying to get people to like veggies here. Yeah, well, okay. I, <laughs> I like all. I like. I like pretty much anything vegan except for uh, those stupid, horrible. I. What do we have? Mandarin uh, preserved mandarin orange peels, mm, right? Yeah. And uh, from what I think, I think they were just not properly preserved <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway anyway sorry oh okay anyway uh nell says it's more to keep it simple with when learning to like veggies and preparing the veggies because it's important because the things get too complicated you're not going to want to do it right um misanthropy suggests that try different grades of cooking them so try it raw see if you like that try it slightly cooked and then try it like mashed <laughs> isn't she a delicate lotus flower she is mm. um <laughs> You know, sorry. <laughs> uh, so sometimes you you might like it, like things cooked to death, and sometimes you might like them raw. So try different ways. You gotta experiment. I agree because it's important for your health. 
Well, you know, I, I uh, used to not like broccoli that much. I mean, but then when I started kind of stir frying broccoli, mm -hmm. I would stir fry broccoli with a little bit of sesame oil and some salt. And then I steam it for a little while with water, you know, just let it steam and then kind of finish it. I really like it that way. It's really good that way. Yeah. But I think, uh, not that I ever hated broccoli. It just never was one of my favorite things. And now it is. So I think that idea of trying it different ways is really smart. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it sounds uh, obvious, yeah. but. Yeah. And another person reminds us again that your tastes are going to change. They do. Um, so try different things. Try going to an Indian restaurant where they do cook the vegetables in a lot of different spices that you might like. So <laughs> try new things. Sorry. Molly's laughing at a uh, fat guy going by with a fishing pole. <laughs> <laughs> Not on a bike, but with a fishing pole. Non-vegan. <laughs> so. Indeed. Yep. So thank you to everyone on the forums who took the time to give some advice. And there are, uh, there's a lot more than I even read, uh, a chance to read, so go visit. So many good ideas. Yeah. And we're, that's what the forums are for. We're there to help. Indeed. All right. So we've got another musical interlude for you. Yet one more. This is... Where does it... Where do Something about breeders. Yep. Some, someone I is had the breeders. Is the breeders the group or no? Breeders, that's a different group. Yeah, the group is Vice Squad. Vice the song squad. is is breeders. I was looking for the lyrics. Yeah. They're in my they're in my stapled paper somewhere. <laughs> Excuse me. Do you have the lyrics for my song? Okay. Uh, I don't uh, have the lyrics. Uh, yeah, right. So basically, I don't have the whole thing. But cross species rapist still got human status. Subsidized subhuman down on the farm alters perfection. Perverts evolution makes a fat living from causing harm. And I'll just play it. Okay, that was Breeders by Vice Squad. Uh, sorry for confusion there. I'm always confused. <laughs> State. It's an ontological condition for me. Hmm. Yeah, it really is. Confusion. No, confusion? Yeah. yeah. I'm ADD boy, though. I really do have a hard time sometimes paying attention. Not paying attention, but I start talking, and then all of a sudden another idea comes into my head, and I have to go there, too. It's all right. Okay, good. <laughs> all right. Well, um, now we have 
for you a Dino segment. Dino, we who cook with Dino are the luckiest people. Yeah, so this one's a good one for uh, busy people. Cool. So all you working stiffs out there, <laughs> me included. You said stiff again. <laughs> <laughs> stiff show. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah, for all you working stiffs out there, uh, you might want to give this one a listen. Hey there, vegan freaks. It's Dino again with another cooking segment that I hope that you'll enjoy. Um, I've been talking to people and uh, at, at work and on the forums and in the chat room and listening to other podcasts and stuff like that, and I've been getting this overwhelming sense that people seem to think that a vegan diet has to be expensive, difficult to make, take a long time, and all this other stuff, more or less to give them excuses not to follow the lifestyle. So I decided that instead of letting my blood pressure rise, which it already did because I was getting more and more pissed off as I heard more and more whining, I figured, okay, instead of bitching about it myself, why don't I give you guys a decent solution for it? Um, so far, I hope that the recipes that I've been giving you guys have been fairly easy to make and relatively cheap and relatively, you know, easy to put together and tasty and that kind of thing. But I figured I'd donate this entire podcast segment explicitly for showing people that a vegan diet can be very quick, very easy cheap, that kind of thing. Um, and I'm not just going to go into the recipe itself. I'm going to go all the way out and uh, show you how to do it from start to finish, from the time you get home from work and you're exhausted till the time that you're at your dinner table and you're eating. All right, so here's how it works. As soon as you walk into the door, I want you to take a large stock pot and fill it about three quarters of the way with water. You'll probably be working with about three or four liters, give or take, of water. Um, just Fill, fill up your stock pot with it and put it on the stove over high heat. Then go ahead and, you know, jump in the shower, you know, get yourself relaxed at the end of your day. Maybe do like what I do, just grab a quick shower, grab a drink, maybe a cigarette, whatever, and just relax for a few minutes while that pot starts heating up. By the time the pot starts coming to a full boil, Throw in about a pound of pasta and just let her rip, you know, just let it get boiled um, until it gets cooked. And that's going to take anywhere from 8 to 10 minutes if you're using dried pasta, 3 to 5 minutes if you're using fresh pasta. Um, along with the pasta, you want to throw in um, a generous sprinkling of salt because this is going to be more or less the only time you get a chance to introduce salt into your food. So go ahead and put it in early um, so that the pasta gets properly salted by the time it gets out of the water. All right, so you got your pasta in your pot of water boiling away merrily. While that's going, get yourself a small 6 to 12 ounce can of tomato paste, uh, a 16 ounce can of diced tomatoes, um, a large yellow onion diced up as finely as you can get it, three or four cloves of garlic, finely chopped, um, and about a tablespoon of Italian seasoning, give or take, maybe about a quarter teaspoon to a half a teaspoon of chili flakes, and maybe about a half a teaspoon or uh, up to a teaspoon of salt, um, and about a quarter cup of olive oil. Throw the olive oil and the garlic into a saucepan, um, and while it's cold, of course, because how it works is that if you take garlic and put it into cold oil, the flavor steeps into the oil much better and it gets more permeated throughout the sauce. So that's, you definitely want to take advantage of that. So go ahead and uh, put your garlic into the cold oil, turn on the heat and turn it up to high. Uh, when you see the garlic starting to sizzle, Throw in your large yellow onion that's already been diced and, you know, saute it until the onions are translucent. Um, once the onions get translucent, throw in the entire can of tomato paste along with a couple of sprinklings of salt and the Italian seasoning. Stir it around so that everything gets combined and that the tomato paste gets completely combined all the way through. It's going to take you maybe about two or three minutes um, to cook the tomato paste in the fat and the 
onions and the garlic and the rest of it. You want to get it slightly cooked in there because it gives it this long cooking flavor that you wouldn't be able to achieve, um, you know, unless you actually sat there and cooked the sauce like all day. Um, then once the tomato paste has been incorporated with the oils and the fats and the Italian seasoning and all the rest of it, and it's been cooking for a couple of minutes, um, two or three minutes maximum, any more than that and it'll start to burn. After that, throw in your 16 ounces of diced tomatoes. Um, it's in a can, so we're not even talking about difficult. Just open up a can of, uh, of diced tomatoes and dump it in. Stir it around for mm, give or take like five minutes or so. Um, and it's going to get really thick on you, and that's kind of what you're looking for because you want a really hearty, rich sauce to go with your meal. By the time your sauce is cooked, your pasta should be ready. So go ahead and drain the pasta, um, put it back into the stock pot, and toss it with the tomato sauce to completely get it combined. Then take... Um, let's say your favorite baguette, slice it in half lengthwise and drizzle on a little bit of olive oil um, and maybe some garlic salt and throw it in the oven at 350 degrees for about two or three minutes just to get it, you know, warmed up um, and go into your fridge, grab like a head of lettuce, maybe um, a little bit of tomato, maybe some cucumbers, whatever you have lying around in terms of fresh vegetables. Um, and just roughly chop everything up and throw it into a bowl and you've got a salad. Don't even worry about dressing because the olive oil with the bread is going to provide enough of a substantial you know, fat coating for your mouth that you don't have to worry about it. Um, and the pasta is going to have a lot of sauce on it, so it's, it's going to give you a really good counterbalance of flavors and textures and all the rest of it. So by the time you're ready to serve it, go ahead and serve the pasta with the sauce and the garlic bread on the side um, and the side salad. I mean, the side salad, don't even worry about taking too much time over. It should just be like lettuce, um, maybe like a small cucumber and a couple of cherry tomatoes or something like that. Really, really easy. Um, and eat your meal with a nice red wine. A full-bodied Merlot would work really well or um, a Cabernet Sauvignon depending on what your taste goes towards. Um, and you've got like a really quick, easy dinner. It should take you no more than a total of 30 minutes maximum to put everything together, um, you know, from start to finish, including the time that you take to, you know, get showered and get relaxed and all the rest of it, unless you're really slow. But that I can't really help. Um, and the entire meal should cost you no more than about $10 to feed a family of four. So it's it's really easy and it's really cheap. Um, another really good uh, tip that I have for people who are in a hurry is to have spinach on hand at all times. Don't use the frozen crap, get the fresh stuff. Um, all you have to do for spinach, it's really easy, is that you get some olive oil into a pan, um, preferably a wide shallow skillet, throw in your garlic um, while it's still cold, turn on the heat. Once the garlic starts to sizzle, throw in, um, let's say, about a half a pound of spinach and saute it in the oil uh, until it gets wilted down. It's barely going to take like two or three minutes. And serve that just like it is um, in between two slices of bread as a sandwich. And it's a delicious nutritious lunch um, or you can even toss it with some pasta and have it just like that and it'll be wonderful or you could even toss it with some rice and have it as a nice little side dish to whatever else it is you would have had for lunch or you can have it all by itself um, mixed up with some tomatoes and some cucumbers and some marinated orange show carts uh, as a nice little snack I mean all these all these kinds of ideas should no should not cost you more than five or six dollars dollars um, for your lunch. Another really nice thing to have on hand at all times is popping corn. And the way I like to make my popcorn is I like to use olive oil and uh, just enough popcorn so that the olive oil barely covers it. And I put it into a really large stock pot over medium heat with the lid on. And I just let it pop. And once I start hearing the pops going down to 
one or two pops every three to five seconds, um, I usually know that that's been popping enough time and any longer it'll start to burn. Um, once it gets off the stock pot and, uh, and I throw it into a bowl to toss it with my spices, I like to use some garlic powder, salt, and fresh black pepper and it's a really tasty snack to have at any time. What I usually do is that on Sundays I'll make up a giant batch of popcorn and parcel it out into individual servings so that I can take it with me to work to snack on, you know, if I'm ever feeling munchy for any reason. Um, another really easy thing to do is hummus from the can. Now, granted, I would prefer it if you got the regular chickpeas, soaked them, cooked them in a crock pot, and, you know, did them properly like you're supposed to do, whatever. But for people in a hurry, if you want hummus really quickly, best way to do it is to get one can of chickpeas, um, usually a 60, uh, an eight, an eight ounce can. Yeah, don't for, don't do a 16 ounce can because it's going to give you too much stuff and you're going to wonder what to do with it. So get yourself an eight ounce can of hum, uh, of, of chickpeas, um, about two or three tablespoons of tahini, a couple of pinches of cumin. A um, couple of bunches of parsley, two, three cloves of garlic, a couple of splashes of lemon. Don't even bother draining the chickpeas because that water will help thin out the hummus so that your food processor doesn't get clogged. Anyway, you take all the ingredients, you dump them into a food processor, and you pulse until everything gets smooth and to the consistency that you want. And this way, you don't have to worry about, um, you know, chopping the garlic or doing much of anything. It's just pretty much dump everything in there and just let her rip, and you'll have a really tasty hummus really quickly, which you can then put onto a pita bread as a spread or onto regular bread as a, you know, bread spread and just have it all by itself like that, or, you know, put other vegetables into the mix and, you know, make it more interesting for yourself. Um, and these are just some places to get you guys started, and I'm hoping that you'll take what I've given you and then take it to the next level so that you can make something that you enjoy. For sure, as always, ask me questions as much as you want to, and I'll do my best to answer them. My email address is diva at veganfreak.com, D-I-V-A at veganfreak.com, or you can find me in the chat room, or you can find me on the forums, because... Like Bob and Jenna said before, I have no life and I'm there all the time. All right, see you guys next time. I hope you enjoyed this. So now our cast iron skillets are treated and our ovens are all preheated. Throw away that fake meat, it'd bring out the vicious wrath of Dino. Vegan freaks love Dino. He sure can cucino. Grazie, Dino. Motto squisito. Okay, so that was a Dino segment. Uh, I just want to add something. Mm. To me, no popcorn is ever complete without nutritional yeast. But of course. I can't eat. I, I love nutritional yeast on popcorn. I've even given it to non vegans. When you don't tell them what it is, they eat it like, this is really good. <laughs> what is it? Nutritional yeast. Ew. <laughs> yeah, someone needs to do a marketing campaign to come up with a better sounding name. <laughs> they need some kind of sexy marketing campaign. Yeah. Dun, 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 nutritional yeast. Yeah, it needs to have a better name. Mm -hmm. Something, I don't know. They need a commercial that makes it very manly. <laughs> Apparently. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's not man food, according to Burger King. No. Right. So, what are we doing now? Voicemails? Yeah. Voicemails. Time once again for some vegan freak voicemail. Maybe we'll hear from a hot chick or a choice male. Callers make us happy and help us keep our sanity. Even if all they want to do is fucking complain about the shitload of profanity. And here's one from my mom. Hi, Bob. This is your mother. Just calling to see how everybody is, and I have a question. I was wondering the other day, how come all vegans have tattoos? <laughs> I don't understand. It's like vegan is just so natural, this, natural that, natural, natural, natural. And nothing is more unnatural than tattoos. You need to give me a call and explain. <laughs> I'll talk to you soon. Love you. Bye. <laughs> I'll answer on the air. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> so, 
<laughs> so uh, for those of you that uh, listen to the subscriber podcast, we talked a little bit about this with mm-hmm. my mom, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty funny. Um, why? Do, well, first off, all vegans don't have tattoos. No, no, no. That's no. The one thing. Yeah. In fact, I think Dino was screaming on the forum something about he's, you know, doesn't want to pollute his temple, pollute his temple kind of thing. So, yeah. yes. <laughs> lots of vegans don't have tattoos, but lots of vegans do. And I mm-hmm. think the reason... It, I mean, I think there are a lot of reasons, but I think one of the reasons is that um, there's some overlap between kind of vegan and punk communities, mm-hmm. and, you know, kind of resisting what society tells you is always right and things like that. And I think people are just generally more open to making up their own minds and making choices about their bodies. And a tattoo is a choice about your body. Mm-hmm. So I think that's that's the main reason. Yeah. The main reasons. What else? Yeah, I don't know. I think I said on the subscriber file something about... I forget what I said, actually. Something, what do you mean? Something about they're more open to finding different and unique ways to modify their bodies that yeah. don't go along with the status quo. There you go. Kind of modif- way of modifying your body. <laughs> so there you go, Ma. <laughs> well, a lot of vegans still have tattoos. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I'm one of them and you're one of them. Mm-hmm. But there are a lot of folks out there who don't. Mm-hmm. And like, I think the whole conversation started off by Sarah Kramer. Yeah, my who's, mom. Who's on her cookbooks with all her tattoos. And yeah, my mom <laughs> said that uh, she was looking through vegan cookbooks at at, I think Borders or Barnes and Noble, one of those mega corporate stores, and uh, she said, "You know, I saw these cookbooks with this tattoo lady on it." <laughs> so, <laughs> that was really funny. So thanks for that call, Ma. And uh, I don't really have any convincing reason. I guess a lot of us are countercultural rebels who uh, hate society and want to be outcasts. <laughs> we, we all want. To we're, make, we're already freaks, so why not go a step further? We all want to make our mothers unhappy. <laughs> no. no. I want to tell you, Mom, though, I am going to get a mom tattoo at some point. Probably a mom and dad tattoo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am going to get the little, you know, heart. I'm definitely going to do it. So, but I don't know when or where exactly. So, but I will. And that's the one tattoo your mother can't hate. Mm-mm. Although I know you don't like any of my other ones, Ma. <laughs> <laughs> she basically thinks, ew, yuck. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's pretty funny. Uh, and they're coming to visit soon. Yeah. So, it's fun. So, thanks for that call, Ma. And uh, here's a drunk dial from, well, she'll say who she is. Hi, Bob and Jenna. It's Teresa again. Um, I'm just going to sweat on the farm. I am less drunk than I was before, but this is another drunk dial. But I thought I'd call you because I just got yelled at for calling some people hippies. And I thought it was funny. And I (laughs) thought I would call you. Because they said I called them hippies in a negative light. <laughs> because they were talking about eating a squirrel yesterday. And it made me think of you. <laughs> um, but I really did want to call you for something serious. Because I wanted to say thank you for her, your book and your for your podcast and for your forum. And thank you for helping me go vegan. Because you really did help me go vegan, Bob and Jenna. And um, I'm up here graduating and like, less than a week on Sunday I'm graduating. And I'm hanging out with all these people, and I keep trying to talk about my online friends. <laughs> and I feel weird because they're my online friends. And I've never met them in real life, and I feel like a dull nerd. And I feel like, oh, vegan freak. <laughs> yeah, uh, so... Yesterday people were talking about eating a squirrel, and today they were all eating chicken wings at this gross Ew. first year program reunion I went to and I kept thinking of you and I wish everyone were vegan. Me too. So, uh, yeah, bye. <laughs> <laughs> so we had to play that one because uh, Teresa graduated today, so That's congratulations. Right. We do need to wish her congratulations. She will probably won't hear the show for a very long time. No, I don't think she'll catch it before she leaves. She graduated today and she's flying to Australia tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> to go live in Australia. For so, a couple of years. For a couple probably. years. So she said now she she's a student, was a student of mine and mm-hmm. one of my advisees and I worked on her with her uh, I said say doctoral thesis, but it's not her undergraduate <laughs> thesis. It was almost a doctoral thesis, um, and sh- she was awesome. So it was really cool, and we're glad we could help you, Teresa. Yeah. <laughs> so Teresa is frisky eating duck light, dusk light on the forums, and uh, I don't know. It was really nice to to kind of we got to meet her family, yeah. and it, it was cool. Yeah. So congratulations, Teresa. If you ever hear this, yeah, I thought we'd you embarrass you. Well, actually, that's the le- less embarrassing of your two drunk dials that you sent us uh. we didn't play the other one which was a lot more <laughs> embarrassing so. well i mean i could embarrass her really badly by telling the story about 
how she'd go to the hospital one time for being too drunk, <laughs> but <laughs> I won't go there. So that was pretty funny, though. So thanks for that, Teresa. Uh, eating squirrel? Definitely, definitely, definitely. Not, not vegan. Not at all. No, squirrels are not vegan. Mm-mm. Uh, eating squirrels are not vegan. I don't know. Are squirrels vegan? They probably eat bugs and stuff. I don't think so. Just what nuts? They eat? No, nuts? they eat. I don't know. They eat nuts. Yeah. But in trash. What does... <laughs> and bagels. And bagels. <laughs> <laughs> the creamy cheese, the cheesy cream. <laughs> so maybe they're not. <laughs> maybe they're just vegetarians. I don't know what they <laughs> I don't know. All the I ever see them on campus is digging in the trash. Yeah, so. they, the <laughs> eating pizza crusts and bagels. Really but anyway, uh, so Teresa, yeah, I wish the world were vegan too. And, um, you know, it's funny talking about your online friends. It's like, yeah, my online friends. Yeah, I know. My... I talk about them like I know them, too. I know. It's like I've never met. We do. We, we 99% talk about of them. all the people we meet online and, and uh, people email us and stuff like, you know, like we know you, but we don't. <laughs> well, we know some of you. We don't know all of you. We've met <laughs> no. very few of you in real life, actually. Yeah. So, but we have met, like, we've met Nell and we've met mm-hmm. uh, Misanthropy. Mm-hmm. And Tofu Punk. And Tofu Punk. And uh, who else have we met? I don't, I don't know. That's about it. Yeah. Well, we've met some folks out mm-hmm. there. Some of you we've met. And uh, we'd like to meet all of you at some point. Yeah. Oh, we met uh, Powder Princess. Oh, yeah, we did. Mm-hmm. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right, 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 right. So, anyway, that was from Teresa. And uh, if you if you see her on the forums, wish her, wish her a happy graduation. So. Cool. She'll, she'll be back eventually. It'll just take her a little while because she's yeah, got thirty six hours of plane flight ahead of her. Yeah, so I think she's going to northern Australia somewhere for any yeah. for any of our listeners in Australia. So get in touch with her. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ian, you still out there, man? We haven't heard. Yeah, from we haven't heard from you in a while. Ian, send her a loaf of bread. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I don't know where I don't remember exactly where Ian is in Australia, but I don't either. Yeah. I'm not good with geography. The geography of other other countries. You're except, such like, an imperialist. Fucker. Except Spain. You're just like America. <laughs> You're just like an American. You know, you don't know anything about anywhere else. I do. Yeah, sure. All right, next voice now. Hi, Jenna. Hey, Bob. This is John. A uh, big fan of the podcast, and I'm calling to comment on a uh, call or an email, I guess, that I heard on one of the shows a few weeks ago. Someone was asking about vegan tuxedos. And I am uh, about to get married to the vegan Vulcan, who you may know from your forums. Um, and I am also was on the search for a vegan tuxedo and was lucky enough to find one. Um, it is polyester. It is not blue. It has no ruffles. It is not in some strange pastel color. Um, it is polyester, though. There's no doubt about that. It's not your... Uh, it's not breathable like wool. It's not uh, really uh, swank and fancy looking, but it's also not made from a sheep. So uh, I would highly recommend looking out for a polyester or uh, any kind of microfiber tuxedo. It comes in the classic black with uh, the standard styles and nothing funky or crazy about it, no uh, 1970s style stuff. Um, and you won't find them in nice places that sell fancy suits, but you probably won't be in there anyway since all you'll find is wool and leather shoes. Um, but most of the places, like in the mall or places that rent tuxedos, will uh, be able to order and will probably sell you a decent enough polyester black tuxedo. So I highly recommend it. I really like mine, and I am totally looking forward to being dressed all veganified for the wedding. So I will talk to you guys later. Awesome. Thanks, John. Yeah, and congratulations. And, uh, absolutely. Congratulations to you and the vegan Vulcan. Yeah. On our forums. Um, and we got a other, couple other suggestions, too, right. um, on the forums, and people sent us some emails. Um, people had mentioned the site called CheapTux.com. So it's just CheapTux.com. Like the penguin. Mm-hmm. And um, apparently you can, you can get... An, vegan tuxes there um and someone else mentioned that the burlington coat factory might have some if you have one of those in your area um and so yeah you, they are out there and another person called and said something about you know going to a tux shop and seeing what they have used to buy because you the buy burlington cheap. coat factory used to have a really cheesy theme song yeah 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 i remember the old commercials i forget they were like from the 70s yeah, yeah. <laughs> well there you go yeah so thanks for that and uh cool there are options apparently indeed I hope never need a tux again. 
Well, you never know. There could be a black tie event we have to go to. I'm sure you'll be in some wedding at some point. Oh, yeah, Dan. Dan and Jen are getting married. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we t- yeah. We They're going to make me wear tux, though. Are they? I don't know. Ask them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. But if they do, I will wear one. If they ask me to, I will. I would do that for Dan. That's how much I love him. And Jenna, too. Cool. So, yeah, Dan, the same guy who wrote the book, that if you call, mm-hmm. if you're the first caller after mm-hmm. the show, you get the book. Mm-hmm. That Dan. That Dan. Yeah. So you see, look, he's an advice guy. He talks about relationships and he's made his work enough to get married. Indeed. If you consider that working. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right. So Tofu Punk. Hey, guys. It's Preserved Mandarin Peel Girl. All right. We got to talk about that for a second, though. I think we already talked about that on one of the past podcasts. Didn't we? Oh, okay. Hey, guys. It's Preserved Mandarin Peel Girl. And, uh,. We just went to John's cousin's first birthday party. I had told his, well, his second cousin. I had told his cousin prior to coming there that we went vegan several months ago and, you know, asked questions about the food, and she said, oh, don't worry about it. There will be pasta primavera, no sweat. Called up the restaurant before we left the house, asked if there was egg in the pasta, no egg in the pasta. We're golden, right? Yeah, we get there. Is no pasta primavera to be found. <laughs> it was penne alla vodka, which is a cream sauce. It was fettuccine alfredo, which is more cream. It was meatballs and sausage <laughs> and marinara sauce covered in parmesan. Okay. So we sat there eating our bread and feeling really freaking hungry. And uh, I asked if there was any pasta primavera in the house, <laughs> and she said no. So we eventually, I, I talked to one of the waitresses and got her to bring out some pasta with marinara sauce without Parmesan cheese on it. But what do you do if you go to an event like that and there's absolutely nothing? I mean, it was it was such a faux pas. People kept asking us, you know, did you guys eat yet? What are you eating? You want some salad <laughs> covered in, in creamy dressing? No, thank you. So words of advice, please. I know you go into it in the book, but seriously, what if you're there and you were expecting to find something, and there's absolutely nothing. But we survived unscathed, though we are still a bit hungry. <laughs> but, hey, we got out of there. We stayed vegan. So I'm happy, and so is John. See you guys later. Bye. Here's what you do. You go in the kitchen, you find the manager, you grab him by the lapels and say, Listen to me, you carnist bastard. Where the hell is my vegan food? I told you in advance I wanted it. <laughs> Give me my vegan food, or I'm going to call down the ALF rate on your, on your restaurant. That's what I would do. <laughs> no, it's not. I know. <laughs> it would feel good, though. Yeah. Wouldn't it? Yes. Well, one thing that we've definitely learned from trial and error is uh, Stop that, yourself before you go. Well, yeah, that you even if they say that there's going to be vegan food there, don't count on it. I mean, that's definitely one thing that we learned. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've told the story, uh, you know, at the beginning of the semester, I think, about going to a department party, and they said that there was going to be vegan soup there, and they accidentally added butter to it. So no soup for us. Um, so they ended up <laughs> no making soup for you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so they asked, ended up making us a salad, um, but we were quite hungry by the time we left. Um, so the thing to do is, if you think that there might not be vegan food there, you know, if they say they work. You don't count on it because not everybody understands what vegan means either. That they might think it's vegan, but it's not. They might call it vegan too. Right. So you need I vegan food? eat at least a little bit before you go, so you're not absolutely starving. And True. then if you don't eat as much there, it's no big deal. Um, so eat a little bit before you go, and then just go to Subway or take out Chinese afterwards. Yeah, that's always a possibility. Yeah. Um, I, you know, you can always take along some kind of nutritional bar with you, too, mm-hmm. if you get stuck in a situation like that. I mean, I, what I would do is, uh, if you know you're going to be having stuck going to a place like that, I would call ahead to the restaurant and make it clear to them what you need. You know? Yeah. And I think the way you handled it was good, though. Yeah, because exactly. Because they brought you pasta and, you know, you had something to eat. So it wasn't like you had nothing. Yeah, so if there is the option of talking to the wait staff, if it's not, like, total buffet and you can't get anything else, then you're stuck. But, um, like, you talk to the wait staff and have them bring out something separate. That's That's the thing to do, definitely. Yep. I I still like my way, though. <laughs> Listen to me, you carnist bastard. I like that. I think that's good. Yeah. 
So. <laughs> no, I think the way you handled it was perfect, actually. Yeah, but um, I think it's important not to look too miserable. Yeah, I think that's because it, then it makes it you you know like oh look at the poor vegan they're not eating anything. But that's kind of but her point though is that she had no control over looking miserable or not because I they're sitting here with no food, starving. So yeah, immediately it looks like deprivation. Like exactly. Look, you look like the unworkable I idiot. I know. You know, and then that, that's. Now you don't want to look like that. No, and well, it doesn't send the right message either. You know, mm. so. I think it's important to kind of sort that stuff out ahead of time if you can. It's hard to sometimes. And sometimes they'll tell you even they'll lie to you and tell you that it's fine. But I always like the lying about allergy thing. I mean, I think if you go to a restaurant and you lie and say, I have allergies, I'm allergic to milk, eggs, and, you know, all this other stuff, they worry. Mm -hmm. Because if you are allergic to something, you go into anaphylactic shock in the restaurant, they don't want to get sued. Mm -mm. So I, I like the lying about allergies line to get you what you need. Yeah. Some people don't like that, but... It does work. I know some people don't like it, but... I know, I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, some people. I know. Hey, I think of it this way, you know. Um, it's good to tell them you're vegan, but uh, a lot of people, let's be realistic, look at that and go, you know, what, what the hell is that? Or you're crazy or whatever. So I think it's worth it to, if you have to, in the situation, do mm -hmm. what you got to do. Yep. That's right. So thanks for that one, Tofu Punk. Uh, we have any others? That's it. That's it. All right, so... Two six seven two nine five nineteen forty four. Write the number down on your refrigerator door. Add the zero zero one country code if you call us from Vienna. That's how you leave a voicemail for good old Bob and Jenna. See, my mom definitely had the number down on her refrigerator door. Mm hmm. <laughs> Get stuck in your head, and people even remember it when they're drunk. They do indeed. <laughs> so yeah, we get a lot of drunk. We, we like do. the drunk dials, though. Yes, they're good. We do they're appreciate. Funny. We so. do appreciate the drunk dials. So so, and always we have. Oh crap! What? Sorry, <laughs> I just like, put my hand out on the keyboard. And there you I go. bumped the button. My bad. That's okay. I suck. Uh, anyway, I was going to say, as always, we still have a big queue uh, of voicemails. But we always love to have more. So, and we always love to have more. So, always, if always. you haven't heard yours, you know, be patient. Yeah, we will get to it. So, we will not leave you stranded out there in, in the desert, oh, vegan freak follower. <laughs> yes. We will lead the way. Yes. Take you through the desert. We will help play your voicemail. That's yeah. right. So. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preach the good word. Okay, good. Can I get an amen? Amen. No, I want a ramen. Ramen. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Holy hell. We're crazy in the head. We're broken. There's something just wrong with us. Yeah. Uh, well, end of the show. End of the show. Yeah, for sure. All right. So, I don't know. We'll be back again next week as usual. Um, we would love to hear from you. You know, our voicemail line is 267-295-1944. You can email us at podcast at veganfreak.com. Join our forums over at veganfreak.com. You should maybe go check out dispatchesfromhell.org for our new book. Mm -hmm. Well, not our new book, but the mm -hmm. new book that we're publishing. Mm -hmm. uh, and don't forget, first caller. Mm -hmm. First caller gets a copy of that book for free. Yeah, go I'm check out the links in the show notes at podcast.veganfreak.com. We may give away more books, too. Indeed. Later on. Uh, I don't know. If you've got anything you think we should talk about on the show, let us know. Yeah. We'd love to hear from y'all. Yeah. So. And you can always go vote for us at Podcast Alley. We like that, too. That's Indeed. good. We won some kind of award, too. Yeah. A pod use or something? I didn't put it up yet. Yeah. I forget what the site was called. Poddies, I think, was the word. P-O-D-D-Y-Z or something? I don't remember. I don't know. The guy wrote to me in, in like, in hip-hop speak. <laughs> <laughs> it, was. it was. It was, like, translator hip-hop speak. It was weird cool well oh whatever man yeah uh, <laughs> it's cool so uh yeah, you should anyway. mention that to me next week we will talk about it okay so be in touch with us we'd love to hear from you see you around the forums and chat room and all that stuff and don't forget to take your b12 take your b12 see y'all later On you, hell,